Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again, back with another version of my top five gaming keyboards. Now this is gonna be my first video for the year of 2019, and I try to make these videos about twice a year since new keyboards are always coming out. Now, if you guys see any keyboards in this video that you wanna learn more about, I've done full length reviews on all of these that you'll find located down in the description below. And for the first time ever in one of these series, I'm actually gonna be giving away the number one pick on this list to one of my subscribers, and I'll have all the details on that at the end of the video. But for now, let's get into my top five gaming keyboards of 2019. Coming in at number five, we have the Logitech G Pro. The G Pro is a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard with superb build quality. It feels really solid and has some really good weight to it. Aesthetically, the board is fairly minimalistic, although slightly convoluted in its design. It has a nice slim bezel on three sides, but this super large area at the top with tons of void space that was kind of bothersome to me. The only things populating this area are an illuminated G logo above the escape key and some dedicated buttons for brightness and game mode that seem to me to be less than necessary. Removing these would have made the board much slimmer and cleaner looking, although I suppose I'm being a little bit nitpicky. The keyboard is only available with the tactile Romer G switch. Now it's a decent switch for those who are new to mechanical keyboards, but certainly not the best feeling mechanical switches out there. One plus of the Romer Gs though is the light pipe design that makes for super well lit characters, giving the G Pro super crisp well lit characters. Logitech software recently got an overhaul and is quite powerful now, letting you do a whole lot with the keyboard. In terms of extras, there's nothing else that comes with the board except for the cable and the keyboard itself. Now, I like the removable cable and I like that it has that nice little bracket at the top to help keep it from getting yanked out of the keyboard. And at 108 bucks, it's a solid 10 keyless gaming keyboard with superb build quality and a good companion software. Coming in at number four, we have the Corsair K70 Mark II. The K70 is no stranger to my top five lists, and it's found a place among the best with just about every variation of the keyboard. The Mark II also has a special edition that you'll be seeing in these clips, but I'll talk about the differences between the two keyboards. The Mark II keeps the familiar design of the K70 with an exposed switch design over a brushed aluminum backplate. The Mark II is available in cherry blue, brown, red, speed, and silent switches, which is really nice to give you a bunch of different options when choosing your switches. But keep in mind that the special edition is only available in speed switches, which is a huge downside to me because I feel like that one's by far the better value. The lights are controlled by Corsair's IQ software, which is one of the better softwares out there, and it lets you save up to three profiles directly onto the keyboard's memory. In terms of extras, the Mark II packs in a bunch of great features with two sets of textured keycaps and a keycap puller, dedicated media keys with volume scroll wheel, dedicated buttons for brightness, game mode, and windows lock, a removable wrist rest, USB pass-through, and a cable routing system under the board. My only real gripe that I have with the Mark II is that the spacebar can be a bit rattly, which has been a problem for Corsair's keyboards over the last few releases. The main differences between the Special Edition and the regular version are that the Special Edition has a silver backplate with the white PBT keycaps and is only available in speed switches. Now the Special Edition is only 10 bucks more than the regular version at $159.99, so if you like linear switches anyways, there's certainly more value to be had in the Special Edition. Coming in at number 3 is the Ducky 1-2 Mini. A Ducky is certainly known for the quality of their keyboards, and the 1-2 Mini is a 60% keyboard variant of the Ducky 1-2. It's comprised of a heavy metal backplate that the switches are mounted onto that's wrapped in a two-toned plastic casing. The board is surprisingly heavy for its size and feels rock solid in its construction. Aesthetically, the board is super clean with its slim bezels and minimalistic look. The board has some great looking RGB thanks to the clear cherry MX switch bodies and the white backplate that the switches are mounted onto that help reflect all that lighting back up at the user. The only downside with the lighting is that the Mini does not support the use of software and is all done directly on the keyboard. Now that being said, there are a healthy amount of presets to choose from from both reactive and animated effects and you can create custom profiles but it's just going to be done one key at a time. Now one great thing about the Mini is that it's available in all mainstream Cherry switch types, including Cherry MX Blue, Brown, Red, Black, Silent, and Speed switches. Now this is great because it ensures that you can get the exact typing experience you want by choosing the exact switch type that's right for you. The 1-2 Mini also comes with PBT keycaps, which is always nice, and Ducky always includes their current year of spacebar, which is currently the year of the pig, and they also include a random set of 10 colored PBT accent keycaps to help give the board a little bit more character. 
It also has a removable USB-C cable, which is always great on the smaller, more portable keyboards. I just wish that the cable was a little bit better quality. At 100 bucks, I think the 1-2 Mini is certainly a great value all around if you're looking for a small form factor keyboard. Coming in at number two, we have the Razer Huntsman Elite. The Huntsman Elite packs in everything a flagship keyboard should. It's got solid metal body construction, a healthy amount of extras with dedicated media keys, and a soft leatherette padded wrist rest. Now the Huntsman line introduced Razer's new optomechanical switches, which use light to register keystrokes instead of mechanical contact points, resulting in better longevity and faster response times. The switches have super solid no key wobble action, a great feeling 1.5 millimeter actuation distance, and a very satisfying crisp click. The Huntsman Elite has tons of RGB with full per key RGB backlighting, RGB enabled media keys, and a light bar that not only wraps around the entire keyboard, but also around the wrist rest too for an impressive total of 168 unique lighting zones. The lights are powered by Razer Synapse software, which allows you to easily configure multi-layered effects or custom profiles, including lighting, macros, and key bindings. Synapse also has in-game integrations with games like Overwatch, Apex Legends, Rage 2, and Mortal Kombat 11, just to name a few, and it really looks awesome when using it with the Huntsman Elite. And if you enjoy RGB, this is a really profound reason to consider a Razer keyboard. I only really have two negatives to mention about the Huntsman Elite. The first being the lack of switch options, which right now there's only a clicky optomechanical switch and there's no word if there will be a linear or tactile version in the future. The second is simply the price. At 200 bucks, it's a pretty pricey keyboard. Now that being said, the Huntsman Elite does have a lot to offer if you can afford the hefty price tag. And coming in at the number one spot for the first half of 2019 is the Hex Gears Impulse. Hex Gears kind of came out of nowhere with this keyboard and the Impulse is a mashup of enthusiast keyboard features and gaming keyboards in all of the best ways. The Impulse has great build quality with a metal top plate behind the switches that's mounted onto a plastic casing, and it brings with it tons of RGB goodness with PBT pudding style keycaps that really let the lighting pop. And it also has a 360 degree RGB light bar that seamlessly wraps around the entire keyboard. The Impulse does not use any lighting software, so you are limited to a number of preset lighting effects or you'll have to individually program each key in order to build your own custom lighting profiles. But luckily there are a ton of really high quality, great looking presets, and if you wanna take a look at all of them, I have them in my dedicated review of this keyboard down in the description. The Impulse gives you your choice of three high quality switch options, including Kale Box Brown, Kale Box White, and Hako Clears. Just keep in mind that there's currently no linear switch option for the Impulse. The best part of the Impulse is that it's only $89.99, which is an insanely good deal for all of the quality features that this keyboard has. We're talking PBT pudding keycaps, great enthusiast level switches, and superb metal body construction. Now in my eyes, in terms of all around value, the Impulse just can't be beat right now. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I do have a Hex Gears Impulse to give away to one of my subscribers. All you have to do to be eligible to win that is make sure you've liked this video to show your support and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think about this list. Feel free to suggest anything different that you may think should have been in different spots or maybe I missed a keyboard altogether. And of course, like I said, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I'll be announcing the winner on my Twitter at Brain Gaming, and you guys can see there who's gonna be the winner. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.